You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for May the 4th Be With You, 2018. It's not safe for work. We are recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we never say things today that we will deny tomorrow. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. <laughs> but I will issue a correction. Yeah, see, that's the thing. If I screw up, I usually, usually if say... I screw up, and mm-hmm. I screwed up. I screwed up the past few weeks in saying that primary season is just about over. It's over for us because we have a very early primary. See what you did there? Illinois. You corrected. At the earliest possible opportunity, would called your attention. Absolutely. An alert yeah. listener... An alert alert. listener wrote us and said, I'm confused because there's lots of primaries coming up all summer long. And I couldn't believe it. She sent us a link to primaries. I was just like, there are primaries in June and yeah. August. And yeah, well, that, that just slipped right by me. Yeah, and I I don't understand having primaries in the summertime, but that's me. So there are lots of primaries coming up, and uh, we're ready to, for that. We'll be ready for that. But I was just wrong. So I'm willing to say I'm wrong. That's also there's two differences between me and Donald Trump. See. I don't deny what I said yesterday, and I admit when I'm wrong. <laughs> so. One, and third, I don't know if you know this, but uh, our our preferred choice for our district, uh, Betsy Jerkson Londergren, uh-huh. is running against Citizens United. Yes, she is. And, yeah, because uh, you know that's the the source of most evil in politics is, is the money, unlimited yeah. dark money that you can just buy whole political parties. Mm-hmm. Um, now, getting rid of that is an uphill battle since the people who are in charge of buying and selling are also in charge of the government. So there's that inherent problem. But, right. well, you know, little steps, baby steps. Um, we do have our old sponsor is uh, is back with us again today, where the good Lord split you. Washington, D.C.'s premier emergency farewell party planning service. They are back and they are making money. I know what's happening is is that all the pre-orders that are going in out of the White House. Yeah. You know, just in case, let's always have four cakes ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we're thinking one might be for uh, presidential son-in-law, um, which is why this week we welcome our newest sponsor, Jared Wipes, the 100% disposable son-in-law wipe. For that not-so-fresh feeling that comes from having some really toxic, felonious shit you need to lay off on someone else, choose Jared Wipes. Jared Wipes, they'll keep you fresh. <laughs> And that's for future generations who are undoubtedly listening to this podcast. Um, that's uh, comes straight from a guy named Rudy Giuliani, oh, who was Lord. a crazy man who used to be the mayor of New York and went on to uh, ruin pretty much everything he touched between then and now, uh, who said of the president's son-in-law that he's pretty much disposable. They're not going to come after Ivanka because she's just a fine lady. And, you know, but but son-in-laws, you know, men, men are disposable, which... I know you've told me that hundreds of times, honey. It, it hurts every single time. Jared, men like him are disposable, oh, I believe is oh, what he said. Yes. yes. And uh, this whole thing of, you know, she's a fine lady. Uh, got Jill Wine Banks. She said, I was just on fire when yeah. he said that. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, she's a she's a White House advisor. She's the the physical manifestation of the entire Trump brand. And she's traveling around the world to set up shop in other countries to find better places for the Trump people to launder and loot and and plow their their ill gotten gains. So no, the whole family has to go down. That whole forget Tiffany. No, Tiffany's off the hook. Baron off the hook. You know, kids. No, no, we don't talk about kids on this podcast except in loving terms. Uh, speaking of which, congratulations to a certain family that had a certain baby that my wife could not stop holding. On I could not stop holding this beautiful little girl on Sunday, mm-hmm. and she's beautiful and making her a blanket, and that's all we have to say about that. But mm-hmm. podcast, they are podcast listeners. They might not be listening this week. No, kind of busy. Because their third child, and this is not the royal family we're talking about. No. It's our royal family. Yes, it's it a friend of ours from church. Yes. Had their third. They have two boys who are gorgeous, and they had a baby girl, and she's beautiful. She's beautiful. And, I, yeah, I, I got to sing to her 
on Sunday and hold her. And yeah, I didn't want to let her go. There was a she... fight in Sunday school over who got to hold the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fight. No. I just sat next to the person that was holding her and yeah. looked sad. <laughs> All here. Or do I get to hold the baby? And, anyway. Oh, and speaking of things we're thankful for, we re- really want to thank Tom at the Coffee Cast podcast. Yeah, uh, they had us on and it was a great conversation. Uh, we have put up links to that on Twitter and I will make sure that we got one up on Facebook. I thought I did, but maybe I, I'll make sure we did. Anyway, we'll do that. Uh, we have had quite a week. Yes. And I did want to share um, sort of what happened in in a very short uh, Reader's Digest version, what I've been through in the past 14 days or 20 days. Uh, in the past 20 days... Uh-huh. I have, as everybody else has, I mean, not, so a lot of this is not unique to me, but uh, finished our taxes. Uh, I have applied for another year of Medicaid for the two girls. Mm-hmm. I have appealed and filled out an appeals form for Obamacare mm-hmm. so that we can get uh, a waiver for open enrollment, which we should not have to do, but we have to do that. Right. Uh, and yesterday I had to visit the local Internal Revenue Service office to tell them, <laughs> no, my check to them did not bounce. No, no. <laughs> and uh, the lady there was very nice and she was very accepting and, and got what I was saying to her right away. And uh, But the night before that was a night of uh, tears and anguish and not sleeping and feeling upset and feeling sorry for myself. Uh, a lot of this is... I know is first world problems, but, uh, Mm -hmm. it has been very hard. Um, and and you've had to shift us over to be a corporation too. Yeah. Well, I did that in January. Uh, we became an S corp just because I was terrified that Donald Trump was going to make it so that, and that the GOP tax bill was going to make it so that, uh, we would not be able to deduct our, uh, internet, you know, the Internet that we have in our house from our taxes, because that's how we make our living, both of us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they were talking about, well, we're going to allow corporations to deduct all of their business expenses. But individuals who run in the gig economy are not going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was terrified that, that, that our taxes were just going to go through the roof because we have expenses related to this podcast of Internet and yes, you know, the books that we talk about and so and movies that we watch and so forth, those are deductible, legitimate deductible business expenses. And I did not want that kind of change to hurt us financially. So that also means more paperwork. And I'm I have an enough of an acknowledgement that I have ADD, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so when I uh, do all of this paperwork and so forth. And print everything out and make sure I have file folders and make sure that I'm organized. I'm really uh, running against my wiring. And it, every time I have to go through this, I have to batten down my mental hatches and do it. And right. I do it because I'm a very conscientious person. Mm-hmm. But it's hard. <laughs> but, the, but at the end of that, process as as you all i'm sure you all out there experience if you're anything like us you you have sort of an emergency setting that your mind goes to yeah like, right must get kids and pets out of house on fire right right that's and then and i i i am also extremely efficient and very focused and can can do that thing that gets get gets something from a to b but afterwards oh. <laughs> it's, it's when everything just sort of yeah. spools and then you pay for the ability yep. uh, to do that with anxiety and dread and, and sticking depression yourself and, and, you know, killing, yeah, and feeling like yeah. you're a failure. Yeah. 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 So, so, um, so you've taken on the job of accountant, sound editor, uh, healthcare expert, <laughs> uh, IRS negotiator, yep. um, and, and also a caregiver uh, to a whole lot of people uh-huh. and on and on and on. In addition to being an educator, and a oh, community nice. activist, and a sound editor, and a podcaster. And by the way, uh, if you go away for three days um, or four days, Crooks and Liars shuts down. So, well, and uh, no, that was the other thing. Is last weekend, bless her heart, uh, my colleague Carolee, who is 
works as hard as I do and more at Crooks and Liars. Yes, she does. Wow. She was out Friday and she was out. I had a 13 hour day last Friday, mm -hmm. literally working from nine until nine thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, podcast was part of that, but it was at the computer from 9 a.m. until 930 at night. And, uh, you know, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, and, and then, that's, and then, that's why we're doing the podcast today on Thursday. Right. Because tomorrow is going to be nuts. Nuts. And there's a whole bunch of other things going on. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, busy and need to get things done. So. Yes. We love you. And you guys have been so great. We've we've gotten uh, an uptick in donations. Uh, we're still out there making up for that Amazon money, though. No, so no. feel free if you haven't. Yeah. It's not too late. If you've gotten a tax refund from your uh, income taxes and you've been waiting to get that to send us uh, a contribution, we appreciate that so much. Or or if you are a uh, uh, what we call a Hollywood liberal type. <laughs> um, and you'd like who, to to fund a podcast. Who right. drives around in stretch limousines, you know, making money moves, living the money life. Uh, I will stop saying that people like you throw nickels around like manhole covers. <laughs> if, if you well, fund. I, I, I would also be more than willing to work with their accountant. Sure, sure. <laughs> to make, be, a, be their employee in one regard that they pay our health insurance premiums and That'd get a deduction for I'd, it, right? I'd be delighted because I, I too am I'm working, you know, a, a part time job and another part time yeah. job. With no, you know, this is with no benefits. There's no yeah. bennies coming to either of us from any of our jobs. So, and I have to say, apart from a little bit, we have to pay on one of the cars. So we bought, we have two used cars in the driveway. We have a little house. Apart from the mortgage and that and car, like seventeen kids, right? No, it just seems kids. that way. Yeah, every single debt that we have is healthcare related. Right, is either insurance premiums. Uh, paying off all of the work I had to have done last year on my heart. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I didn't have open heart surgery, but I had to have a lot of testing done. I have a valve that's an anomaly. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm able to exercise. I'm breathing fine. I never smoked a day in my life, so I'm... In... I'm trying to convince her. I'm trying to yeah, get her to... She's trying... Well, I was thinking I'd go straight to heroin after a week like this week. You know, yeah. why not just inject some mind numbing substance into my body. Cause that's how I felt. But uh, especially when I got that email saying, you know, we're not sure your check went through. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, so whew, anyway, it, that's, that got, this is that, just... it all got worked out that, I mean, I, w and I did say to the person at the IRS, I said, you're a real person with a real job. And I really appreciate what you do. And yeah. I'm not mad at you. I know this is a big bureaucracy. I know these things happen. You know these things happen. I'm here. The you know I got the email the night of May first. I'm in the office after work on May second, saying, "Please let me tell you that I'm not a tax avoidance person. I want to pay this. I do. I did pay this. You know, so forth." And <laughs> she was funny. She was she was cheerful mm -hmm. and said. Uh, oh, no, we don't move that fast. You know, if you get this settled, if we if we work this out today so that our error and your error and everything else gets worked out so that the money goes through, we'll make it happen, you know, and you won't get a letter with a big fine on it because we don't move that fast. So, And, and you know. broadly speaking, our interactions with um, units of government. Yeah. Has been very positive. Very positive. We don't hate yeah. government. We think government's no. kind of necessary. In fact, uh the, the one of the gentlemen at the post office that I, I know, um, you know, on more than just a nodding basis, mm -hmm. uh, did ask me because I was waiting in line. How's the podcast going? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, go our motto is unions. Yeah. Our motto is go postal unions. He said, no. And the woman next to him says, really? I said, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You're, this go is civilization. Yeah. You know, post offices, roads and libraries are goddamn civilization. And yeah. we are all we like what you do. You do great work and we really want you to keep doing it. And. It it is, it, it is nice to be able to tell people who work for a living to make my life a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the work you do to make my life a little bit easier. And uh, then uh, give me my goddamn stamps because. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough we, about us. Let's talk about Rudy Giuliani yeah, shit in the bed. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty good. First of all, um, I would like to hear you talk about Rudy Giuliani as Roseanne Barr. 
I'm an independent. But Rudy Giuliani is America's mayor. You really have a future there, bright future there, honey. <laughs> I, I was trying, we were trying to work out a Roseanne Barr versus uh, William F. Buckley kind of exchange. Oh, yeah. I yeah. can't, uh, I'd have to hold my nose so hard that I'd pass out to do William Buckley. I could do it, but your Roseanne Barr is, is very, very good. Well, um, thank you. But what, and part of this came up. Bill Maher, who is dead to me since he had Milo on the show. Yes. Uh, but he he did do an open letter to Roseanne Barr last weekend. Yeah. And pointed out to his credit, remembered that she had helped his career and helped him when he was broke and helped him out. Yes, helped and a lot of people. Backed him up and allowed her celebrity to go on the line for him at times when it was risky to do so. And uh, so good for him remembering where he came from and who had helped him along the way. Yeah. That is a very positive thing. Yeah. And then he said, but really, Roseanne, you're not a Republican. You're a liberal. You're a and socialist. You're, you're a socialist. socialist. You're a socialist. And you have said you need a maximum income. There needs to be a maximum income and so forth. And he also said that season two of Roseanne should be, you know, Roseanne becoming disillusioned with Trump. And I said, yeah, she's not going to become disillusioned with Trump. She's going to right. become an independent. I'm an in, You can see it I'm happening. I'm an independent. You no. Can see, you can see it <laughs> happening, right? I wrote a long post uh, today about how the West Wing screwed us all up. But the gist of it was just you can see it coming. You can mm -hmm. see the uh, – he's not a real Republican. He's, yep. He was a Democrat his whole life. Uh, here's what liberals and Democrats need to do to curry favor with us never Trumpers who are really the only really righteous. Why won't you suck up to us never Trumpers? We're the ones that have been right all along. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, 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 this woman, uh, Sherry, uh, I want to say Jacobson, but I'm, I'm probably getting that last part wrong. Jacobs, who's a, I think it was. Uh, who's a, a Republican operative, a GOP hack. Um, she's on CNN up until the day she sort of went toe to toe with Corey Lewandowski, and then CNN just sort of made her disappear. But she write, she gets paid to, to write stupid opinions in American newspapers, including the USA Today. And she and I went back and forth on the Twitter, which was hilarious because she wrote this thing about here's yeah you know, oh yeah the GOP is is sucks, but there's all of us moderates and independents and never Trumpers out here. And what we need to hear from you liberals is that you're going to act like grown ups. But you're going to get rid of those the crazy the extremes on both sides, and you know and and tell us what we need to hear from you. First of all, drop all that social stuff, you know those social issues, uh, so we can have a nice calm conversation around it. Because both parties, both sides are really bad about this. And second, you really have to get serious about deficit reduction. <laughs> and I I gave her both barrels um, politely about both siderism, and she she said, you know, read the article and get back to me. So I did. Actually, I had already read. I said I re I've already read it. This mm -hmm. is this is this is ten year, twelve year, fifteen year old recycled David Brooks bullshit mm -hmm. with a little bit of Joe Scarborough, a sprig of Matthew Dowd poured over crushed Joe Scarborough and served lightly. That's all this bullshit is. And I've been writing about this for thirteen goddamn years. I've written five thousand columns on it, five thousand posts on it, and I, I wrote her her own post today. But yeah. you can see it happening right in front of you. And yeah. that sort of brings us to the theme of our show, which is potentially. Um, <laughs> ironically. Ironically. Uh, we're going to try a Science Fiction University political podcast crossover, <laughs> um, which is going to fail just spectacularly. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. It's going to be spattered all over the walls. But from a science fiction alternate universe timeline perspective. Right. Right. Is it possible? That the Trump administration is one of the best of all the terrible, terrible possible outcomes for the Republican Party and for the Beltway media. Oh, is that what we're going to talk about? Well, I thought I'd just set that up a little. Bit. I thought I thought we were going to talk about how the Trump administration was the best possible outcome in terms of destroying yes. the Republican Party exactly. and destroying the careerist Beltway media. That's exactly right. The, the ball. The, no, the... the that's exactly right. The best possible outcome for wrecking them. Okay. For them to you their left knees. out the wrecking part. And yeah. I was thinking, oh, gee, <laughs> if we leave out the wrecking part, that defeats the whole my, purpose. My husband has lost his damn mind. <laughs> um, no, the, the idea. The way, you, you mentioned Lewandowski. Yeah. I did want to read a quote to you from Corey Lewandowski from yesterday. 
The um, only way the tread president lightly, honey. tread yeah, lightly. <laughs> the only way the president is going to face an impeachment proceeding is if Democrats take control of the House of Representatives, which I think is their goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I said, whoa, Captain Obvious has figured out what politics is. <laughs> and uh Mr. Hugh Hewitt. Yeah. Another genius. Another genius today. Stable genius. Yeah. yeah. Uh, went went on a, a long discussion about how, you know, um, Bill Clinton understood the political necessity of impeachment, the political reality of it. But Donald Trump doesn't have to face that. And it's just this kind of, you really are a fucking android, aren't you? You just spew bullshit that makes absolutely no sense that you're lying about without batting an eye or breaking sweat all the time. And, and the reaction has been pretty much universal. Like, why why would anybody put this asshole in front of any camera anywhere? Mm -hmm. um, he just it, – it, it, you see this entire – this dead-eyed stare. Uh, when, when Hillary Clinton was running, he was obsessed with the foreign policy, the Foreign Corruption Act, the Foreign Agency Corruption Act, and how right. that's going to take him down because the Clinton charity, the Clinton Foundation was somehow corrupt – and that would be the end of the Clinton presidency. And he was the fucking universal expert on this obscure law that was definitely going to take down the Clinton presidency that would never get off the ground because, you know, foreign agents, foreign corruption, boom, game over. And then Donald Trump won. And suddenly Hugh Hewitt has has no recollection of ever saying any of this. Right. And now right. he just says the exact opposite. And people like me just post, repost what he said and he never responds. He never reacts because he's not fucking human. He's well, an android. I, I think he leader. is human. I think he, he does, though, have an android method to what he's doing, which is his only goal and his only value in the universe that he has created is that Republicans will return his phone calls. Yes. And he has connections and will get a an anonymous quote or a not anonymous quote or get someone on his show for an extended interview. I mean, this is the secret of Fox also is that's how you get the president on. You're a very friendly outlet. You will never say anything that would hurt the Republican cause. And so you have connections within the Republican superstructure that make you valuable to MSNBC. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole cycle right there. And we'll, that's how it works. And we'll, we'll put you on Meet the Press every now and then to to mm -hmm. boost your credibility back up to where it was. My point being, which is the point of this podcast almost every week, is you can, if you look carefully, if you look just with an honest eye, you can see them doing it in public. And that's what we mean by right. the, it's all out in the open now. Everyone's playing with their cards up. And that's, yeah, that's yeah. what takes – and, and Hugh Hewitt makes me sad because I do think he's smart. Yeah. I do think, uh, you know, he's somebody who I knew in college. Mm -hmm. And I did know conservative guys in college who thought that their politics was going to save the universe. And they were going to be a careerist and make a lot of money. And uh, they're just wrong about everything and have no real friends. And it's it's a tragedy. But – He's, to, he's chosen this path of, I'm going to make these people happy. It's going to make me successful. And he's found people to enable that. So there you go. So would you uh, like to invite the Bible but, bitch to our circle? Sure. Um, you, I did want to thank you for writing about West Wing, though. Because <laughs> you know I hate the West Wing. I know Wing. you do. And I really hate it. And I hate it really bad. And Drew Class watches it in one room, and I go out in the other room. And the reason I hate it is it's... Uh, a fantasy that didn't come true. Yes. And it was used to comfort people during the Bush administration when we should have been fighting. And let's talk about Legion before we do Bible. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a better segue. That's a that wonderful point. It's, it's Legion. And, and first of all, Legion is a solid, awesome science fiction show. It is. Uh, and we are not talking about this week's episode. No. So I don't want anyone who has not watched this week's episode to think we're doing spoilers. I think we're, we feel entitled to talk about a previous episode, though. Right. Um, and not in great detail. And not everything. Talking. No. But uh, the episode from last week, yes. um, not this past Tuesday's, but last week's episode, ended with a speech from um, David's girlfriend. Uh, Sid right? Barrett, which you, you all remember because Sid Barrett was one of the original founders of Pink Floyd. Right. So Sid... Mm -hmm. 
gives a speech at the end of two episodes ago. Mm -hmm. And she talks about, uh, because she she loves David and David loves her and they really love each other. And it's a wonderful relationship how much they love each other. Mm -hmm. But she has to get it through his head that their love is not going to make them win. Right. That it's not, they they are not living in a fairy tale where love will conquer all and everything will be okay because we love each other. Mm -hmm. And she has to make him learn this. Yeah. He has to learn. <laughs> he, she puts him through an exercise where he has to learn this. Right. A, a Groundhog that, Day like exercise. Right. Yeah. He has to learn that love is not enough. Their love is not going to make them win. What's going to, their love is what they get when they do win, but they win because they fight. Right. And we have to fight the the forces of evil, you know, and in this show, those are very carefully delineated, they are. but, and they're very carefully delineated in our world too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, and she says, love won't save us. We have, love won't save we us. Have to, we have to, fight. we have to save yeah. love. Our job is to save love, not the other way around. Save love. Yeah. And it's the yeah. pain that we've gone through our lives. The pain, the, the the bullying, the infliction of damage, the scar tissue we carry around with us that gives us the power we need to win the fight. Mm -hmm. And you know what it reminded mm -hmm. me of? I told you this at the time. It reminded me a hell of a lot of the end of Casablanca. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where yeah. it's, it's – I believe they kept the ending sec uh, a, a secret or kept away from the actors so they, they really wouldn't know how it would end. Yep. yep. They had to play it with the level of uncertainty that the characters would actually have. But at, and I'm not, I, fuck you, I'm going to spoil Casablanca. If you haven't seen it, well, that's just on you. <laughs> but after he shoots the Nazi, because you got to shoot the Nazi, yeah. um, Rick puts his woman on a plane with her husband. Uh -huh. um, the lo gives up the love of his life uh, for reasons that, you, that are completely understandable by this point. And he tells her the problems of three little people yep. don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the war is bigger than everyone. The war is bigger than all of us. And, and the mm -hmm. unspoken truth is, of course, he loves her. Of course, she mm -hmm. loves him. They're, they are, they're, their love is the great love that drives, that powers the whole movie. But it is insignificant compared to the cause. And the cause needs her at this moment more than he needs her. Yep. And that's, and that's the way of things. And he had to be the grown-up and make that decision for all of them. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. earlier in the movie... She says, you'll have to do the thinking for all of us. Yep. And that's the moment where he accepts moral moral responsibility for everyone. Yes, he says, I will. And that's the moment when he decides, all right, I'm making all the decisions from now on. Mm -hmm. As a general makes, and the, not as a law. The decisions are, right, and the decisions are hard decisions that where I have to sacrifice. Right. Everyone has to deal. sacrifice. Everyone's going to be in pain. But the, the cause, the, the thing we're fighting is so bad and so immediate and – requires of us such extended focused effort that th the problems of three little people <laughs> don't amount to a hill of beans. And, and that really is yeah. sort of our alternate um, science fiction worldview. It's not, we're not, I'm not saying that the Trump administration is the best thing that could happen at all. Um, the Trump administration is killing people is, is ruining lives is wrecking institutions is wreaking the sort of havoc on our basic democratic institutions and our, our standing in the world and future generations that will require enormous effort to clean up from, but any Republican administration would have, would have, that would have been true of yep. any one of them. They would have done the same fucking thing, but they would have been smarter about it. They would have been more sinister. They would have been more clever. There would have been more people in the media going, well, you know, it's really both sides. Mm -hmm. You know how it really is both sides. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe if you just give them a chance and, and not, not obstruct everything they do. Chuck Todd would have been completely on board if the same shitty decisions were made by Marco Rubio mm -hmm. or, or or Ted Cruz, for that matter, yeah, yeah. Um, yep. than, than Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is – is the is the MRI? It's the X-ray. It, it, Donald Trump has laid open what a completely rotten, corrupt institution the Beltway media truly is, yep. and what a completely degenerate shit pile the Republican Party truly is. And now it is now it's out in the open. Now it's hurt a lot of people, but maybe um, it was high time. Maybe it was time for that to happen. Maybe it was time for the the Beltway media to be brought to its knees. Yep. Maybe it was time for for the or corruption. At least the, the mask Republican... to be taken off. That somehow yeah. their reporting is what's important to democracy when they are literally uh, be being puzzled and confused by the fact that the press secretary is lying to them 
and wondering aloud why Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who will forever now be known as Lie Shadow, um, <laughs> I didn't know that Lie Shadow is uh, didn't walk out on this this roast. It was a roast, for goodness sakes. That's what it is. They should watch the Donald Trump roast and see how he laughed at them making jokes about him. Uh, but you know why did why didn't she walk out? Well, why didn't you walk out? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know why the entire Beltway Media, the entire White House Correspondents uh, Association members don't walk out on Sarah Sanders the minute she opens her mouth and tells them a lie. Yep. And something they know that's not true. Walk out. You don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, they think of it as their job to be called on yes. in these meetings. That's their job. Not to stand up for democracy or to have any higher goal than to be called on. Um, okay. Uh, I know we're going to do a, a news roundup. There's a lot going on. Uh, just breaking as we're recording drift glass, uh -huh. a member of Scott Pruitt's press team tried to plant a damaging story about Ryan Zinke's team in order to quote, take the heat off of Pruitt. <laughs> The White House caught him and asked if they had the authority to fire him. <laughs> oh. So they're eating each other up. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this is what happens. What This week is what happens. Yes. You know, I said it's a crazy comedy crime caper where 43 people are trying to cover up for the bad things that have happened. Yes. And the bad things that keep happening. Thank you to Kay Garrett, who said that he didn't think that um, – Laura Ingram could even get crock blockers to sponsor her show at this point. That's a shame. You're right. Shame. You're right. She couldn't. She can't drink Slim Fast at her desk anymore. I mean, you know, that's sad. That's just sad. That's just sad. So what's this tweet you sent me yesterday? Uh, well, yeah, from today. Jesse. No, this morning, Jesse McLaren, McJesse said, we're living in a time when, quote, reimbursement for porn star hush money was paid to a lawyer through the retainer. Uh -huh. That's the headline the president wants you to see. Yeah, I did see that. That's <laughs> that's the diversion. That's the thing they want that's you looking the... at. Really? Really? <laughs> look over here hey, about my at... reimbursement for porn star hush money. Yeah, but don't look over here. Look over there. <laughs> wow. What? No, see, now I want to see this other thing. I, I really want to see this other thing. <laughs> It's like it's like they, they got Barnum and Bailey working for the White House in the worst possible way, because because yeah. it's like no, you you really don't want to see what's behind this door, do you? Do you? <laughs> I really do. I, are you sure you want to come in and see it? Because it's pretty scary. Ah, oh, yes, I do. Hmm. That's that's great if you're running a circus or a freak show or uh, whatever. It's a terrible thing if you're trying to hide the massive criminal enterprises of the uh, corrupt president that you guys all serve and who you guys are now all wired to. This is like King Rat, you know, the, 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 the cluster of rats that are all tied to the tail by their own shit. Mm -hmm. This is King Rat. This, they're all corrupt. They're, you, you cannot be in this administration. You cannot serve in this administration without being a horrible, horrible human being. And that's the broader, that's the broader story because in, in one of our, our statistics today, um, I just want to bring this up very quickly. Uh, it turns out that 60-something uh, percent, 61 percent of Americans think Trump lies regularly. Mm -hmm. But but 76 percent of Republicans believe he tells the truth all or most of the time. <laughs> that's the divide. Yeah. That's, the, that's the part of the story. That's the part about uh, uh, this being the best possible shitty alternative. It's very hard to, st to ignore the fact that that the problem is the whole Republican Party. Yeah. And it's very hard, and, and it's increasingly hard for the media to ignore the fact that they have ignored this problem for decades. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have been absolutely complicit. That's why the the humming and the whirling and the little the little sounds of motors and, and bandsaws of them building hastily constructed life rafts is all you hear in the media now. It's all about those people over there. They did it over there. We never knew. It wasn't us. And and how about we all get on board here by you giving me everything I want so I can get the hell away from being held accountable for the shit I did. Mm -hmm. And and that worked last time because people still live in the West Wing world where it would be nice if we actually had you – know, even if we have to make some fuckers up, invent out of whole cloth, respectable, honorable Republicans – 
let's pretend as if they're salvageable. Let's give them one last chance. No, nope, they're going to put on funny hats and call themselves tea partiers and, and attack Barack Obama because he's black, because that's who these fuckers are. And now it's time to understand they all have to go. Right. There's no, there's no salvageable anything left inside the Republican Party anymore. And anyone in the media who keeps treating them like a political party instead of a dumpster fire, trademark, Drift Class 2005, <laughs> um, is part of the problem, period, full stop. Which brings us, I believe, to the end of the Bible. Right. The at very end of the yeah. Bible. Bible yeah. bitch. Let's well, do a Bible I bitch. I don't want people – spoiler alert. We're going to take you to the end of the Bible and tell you how it ends. So if, if you haven't – if you've never read it, <laughs> it's a pretty surprising ending. Kind of shocking. So hang on to your garters, boys and girls. Bible bitch. That's not scriptural. I'm reading from the book of Revelation because uh, – it has come to me very clearly over the course of this week. I, If anybody's familiar with Mary Baker Reddy, who founded the Christian Science Church back in the late 19th century, she wrote about the book of Revelation, Revelation and particularly this passage. And she said, why stand aghast at nothingness? And that's been coming to me a lot as this uh, Trump saga continues to devolve into comedy more than tragedy. And I'm not saying that there isn't tragedy going on because there is and the courts are being stacked and people are losing their housing and there's just such a corrupt level of corruption and also a level of contempt for average Americans in this administration that, that it's that all and of that is very that harmful. Some of our neighbors and colleagues and relatives are monsters, which, yeah. is, which yeah. is a heartbreaking thing tragic. to have to face after all this time. Yep. Yep. But the but the stand aghast at nothingness part of it is dealing with a group of people who are all trying to cover something up that uh, happened so blandly as just another deal for these guys who are they are so amoral and so used to getting their own way and so used to cheating to get their own way that taking the help of a foreign government and colluding, yes, Donald Trump colluding with them to make a deal that you'll get dirt on Hillary Clinton and we'll make these sanctions go away. And that's mm -hmm. all it was, was a deal, you know, that's, and not thinking about it. Oh gosh, we didn't know that was illegal. And of course they're that stupid. And of course they're that crass and that uh, amoral and that globalist <laughs> in terms of they don't care about America first, no. you know, we can make a deal with a bunch of rich Russian oligarchs. Sure. Because that's why you have Michael Cohen, people like that. Yep. You just yep. blow through whatever laws are in your way without even be, being barely aware with that they money. exist. With more money. And then you send yep. your fixer out with threats and money to cover it all and up. And make it right. That's how you operate. Yep. And that is how you do your business. Mm -hmm. And that's how you've always done your business. So when I say stand aghast at nothingness, what I'm saying is, look, you know, this is who he is. And... Uh, at some point, and I think that we have turned a corner in terms of sort of the zeitgeist of American discussion, where it's not so much outrage anymore. It is outrage, but it's also just you, Donald Trump, are ridiculous. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows you're incompetent, you're unqualified to be president, you're corrupt, and you're a joke. And... Uh, there, there's there's now, I hope, a turning to the Republican Congress and Mitch McConnell and the and the mainstream media that continues to enable yes. this president and that and that we realize we no we know what we're going to do we're going to turn out these enablers and leave him bare so that uh, he can be taken down. Uh, that's you can't go through the Republican Congress to get moral no. government back. No. The moral majority is going to have to take them out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. no, they all have right. to go. And so this, this verse, um, Revelation 12, 7 to 12, says, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but were no match for Michael. And Michael is an angel. Archangel. Uh the archangel, mm -hmm. they were cleared out of heaven. Not a sign of them left the great dragon, ancient serpent, the one called devil and Satan, the one who led the whole earth astray, thrown out and all his angels thrown out with him, thrown down to the earth. 
Then I heard a strong voice out of heaven saying, Salvation and power are established, kingdom of our God, authority of his Messiah, the accuser of our brothers and sisters thrown out who accused them day and night before God. They defeated him and the, they, excuse me, I'm sorry. They defeated him through the blood of the lamb and the bold word of their witness. They weren't in love with themselves for they were willing to die for Christ. So rejoice, O heavens, and all who live there, but doomed to earth and sea, for the devils come down on you with both feet. He's had a great fall. He's wild and raging with anger. He hasn't much time, and he knows it. And, you know, I don't want to make pass judgment on Donald Trump as to whether he goes to heaven and hell. <laughs> uh but I am not going to stand aghast at nothingness anymore because he's a joke from the standpoint of his power over my mental health. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going it's, to let that happen. Uh, and that that's that's a really interesting point because mm-hmm. I've heard, you know, gaslighting and numbing and yeah, you know yeah. the, this reaction. I'm not gaslit at all. Yep. Gaslighting yep. is is the is the process by which you you create so much dissonance so much cognitive dissonance Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. by blatantly false and ridiculous answers to obvious questions that you confuse and addle the person that you're trying to gaslight Mm -hmm. i know exactly what i'm watching i'm watching the apotheosis of the republican party as i have known it my entire adult life ending exactly as we all knew it would because they're monsters yeah and they have they have built this great monster making machine on purpose they've spent their time and their treasure and their hearts and their souls building this great awful thing and this great awful thing this this rough beast slouching at last to Bethlehem to be born has been born mm-hmm. they and, and I know what I'm watching so when Sarah Huckabee Sanders looks me in the eye and just lies and lies Lie and lies, she doesn't fool yeah. me yep yep I'm not fooled. I'm but not Drift confused. Has, I know I'm, what I'm looking Drift at. There's a difference at. because you're an angry Irishman. That's true. I am. <laughs> and so you don't have any illusions or you don't have many illusions that humanity is good and we really ought to expect the best from people. And uh, the the gaslighting comes and I, you know, I speak from experience on this and I, I mm-hmm. know a lot of other women who've been through divorces who, who have been through this experience of really, you know, he may get he may have a temper and he may get mad sometimes, but down inside he's really a good person. Right. And yeah. that's when the gaslighter can just blatantly lie to you about things he says he said. Right. And I always told you this. And you never listened when I told you such and such. And you think you must be going crazy or you weren't listening or you you're at fault somehow when actually the gaslighter is is like Donald Trump looking you straight in the eye and saying, I never said that. I right. didn't say it that way. It's, it's a brand new day. There's a brand new fact that I'm putting out to you. And that's the one you're going to believe well, today. The, let me, let me ask you, because that's a perfectly mm-hmm. valid point. I, I, I absolutely take you, uh, your point and I agree, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. do you know any liberals that Donald Trump is fooling? That they're, they're somehow confused by what they're seeing or, or like maybe he didn't say the shit he just said yesterday. Maybe I don't know any liberal to feel that way, but I think this goes back to something you and I were talking about yesterday that that this was going to be the theme of our podcast, which is I know a lot of liberals who felt that um, America right. was an ideal that onward and upward. This this goes right back to to Legion. Right. Onward and upward, American history is a story of progress. I agree. And, and that's, that's that obvious. alone will carry us yeah. through to the next level of whatever our next step is. And what we learned on election night 2016 is American progress is not inevitable. You have to fight for it. Oh, as you told me today, we learned yet again what? African Americans in this country have known right, for, exactly. for their entire life for all for generations. Exactly. That no, 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 no. Precisely. Welcome to the party, guys. Yeah, this is right. Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, white but, white women, welcome to the party. Guess what? It's not easy, and it's a constant struggle. I do yeah. want to distinguish between people who are broken hearted because this thing came along that cut the legs out from under the forward progress of America because they're mm-hmm. evil. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because the force that did that is despicable and awful and monstrous and anti-democratic and horrifying and well-organized and well-funded. 
that the the acknowledgement that there's this big, scary, toxic, evil thing sitting at the center of our country, wrecking it on purpose is something that is is really hard to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I get that. Well, and, and I do think that there's a whole swath of the mainstream media that is gaslit every day. Now that I agree that with. Yes, we say we blame Washington, but Washington is also full of a lot of really great people. people. And, you know, Fox News has some great reporters working there. Right. And we're all making money. Right. And and so forth. And then Michelle Wolf calls them out and said, you created this and you're profiting from it. It's like, yeah, but we're doing a job for the First Amendment and we're really great people. And all my friends are so smart and so great and not being able to look in the mirror and acknowledge their part in this. Well, and that's that's the difference. I I think mm -hmm. I, I agree with you absolutely about that too. But these people have been self-selected into roles where lying about Washington is their job. Right, right. That, so they're not confused by it. They're simply accepting that that's the environment. This is what I'm here to do. I'm here to lie uh, about and and the the cruel irony is that the people who are doing this, who are, who are horrible at this, who do this the worst, who are the most unreliable, the most um, despicable, the most enabling, are the very people who turn to the First Amendment and say, uh, my profession is protected by this because a free and fair press is necessary for democracy. And informing the public is blah, 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 blah. The very people who are supposed to or charged with the sacred, I would argue sacred duty, of informing the public of imminent danger are the ones who are who who've who've torn out all the wiring from all the fire alarms. Mm -hmm. thrown, and 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 yeah. I I did admit defeat that yeah. night when I had that bad email from the IRS and had to go clean it up and so forth of just feeling despair. And I turned to you and I said, "They're going to win. They're going to win." And you said, "Who?" I said, "The voters who say they're independent." That's exactly right. They're going to win That's because exactly there's right. sixty million of them out there, and they buy fried chicken. And because they buy fried chicken uh, and, and cars and pharmaceuticals and everything that is advertised on cable news, uh, they're going to get a pass and they're going to be able to save face. Yes. And so we have to focus on the media <laughs> and the elected officials who try to make this excuse. And because uh, yeah. we aren't going to win when it comes to the 60 million voters. They they may achieve certain levels of shame where they come around or they may stay home or they may not. But but we cannot win against them because I really don't think we can win against the voter that changes his mind and just decides, well, I'm an independent. Uh, we, we can shame those people who enable that in the media and who have accountability, but uh we're not going to we're not going to change those minds. And I we can beat them at the ballot box. Yeah, and we can make right. Well, people that's who enable them. We can use our admittedly wildly underfunded, <laughs> but collectively focused. It's yeah. a powerful tool yeah. um, to make people in the media who enable this bullshit. We can make them very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We can make mm -hmm. them sweat if we choose to. If enough people focus in on. Chuck Todd. Make this Chuck Todd week. Make Chuck Todd shit himself this week. Really just bring – it is possible to force people in the media to change or to alter. I mean, Bill Crystal once upon a time had a column in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't. Yep. Now, Bill Crystal has gone on to a glorious career destroying democracy in many other ways and being paid by virtually every media company in the universe to do so. But there was a moment there when you could stick a crowbar into the New York Times and pry his ass out. And we're rapidly approaching another moment of softening when even people in the media are getting it through their heads that, oh, this shit's really bad. I have to find a way to distance myself from this. And once they admit that, that's our opening. That's where we can stick a crowbar in and start prying some of the shit yep. loose. Yep. Anyway. And and there was an individual, I will not name him on Twitter, yes. who said, I've had it. I, I yes. am physically yes. changing my voter registration yeah. from Republican to independent, of course, because Democrat isn't quite a right fit. That's not quite the right fit for me. Uh, but he received a lot of positive responses from people on Twitter saying, welcome to the resistance. I did not stick my nose in that. But what I would have if I had, and I didn't because 
you know, he has far fewer Twitter followers than I do. Right. He, I am right. punching down if I start punching at him. And that was not my, that is not my intent. But I want to say to someone like that, can I trust you as a voter? Can I trust you not to threaten my children's health insurance anymore? Right. Can I trust you not to threaten my social security when it's my turn to get it? Can I trust you not to vote for people who were threatened that? And if the case is, yes, you can trust me, I will never vote Republican again as long as I live yeah. because I see what they did and they're wrong. Welcome to, welcome to my team. Yeah. Uh, if you're saying I'm an independent and what I mean is I'm just waiting for another Mitt Romney to come along or another, yeah. you know, I don't know why Rubio didn't get the nomination. If, if that's, you know, Paul Ryan's a decent guy. If that's your attitude, it's just this Trump who I'm offended by. Yeah. Where have you been? Well, and that's that's the person who's clearly li- that's the new Tea Party. It is the new Tea Party. Yeah. That's the new Tea. That's the I was never there. I don't know who George Bush is. Look at my funny little hat. Um, those are the people who last time got a free pass, um, were were spirited away by Dick Army and the Bush off machine into a brand new world of complete. And that I, I've said this before on this podcast. That's the moment when something like Donald Trump became inevitable. Yeah. When 40, 50 million assholes who voted for bush twice and cheered bush twice and called us traitors for eight fucking years and it all fell apart in front of them were allowed to be let off the hook for the shit they did and they went immediately from being that person to being a birther tea party racist asshole independent and right and right, that right. cannot be allowed to happen right, again right right that's and that's when we to- have to attack vociferously if i may mm. use that ten dollar word coverage of these events when they occur to say oh no these are trump voters and everybody knows it scarlet letter time baby. and scarlet letter. you know name and shame you are a tr- yeah you're a mega you're a mega voter you are you're not you're not an independent you're not you're not just a conservative i'm a constitutional conservative who cares about america no you don't get out of this anymore and the members of Congress who stood there with no. thumbs up next to Donald Trump don't you're, get out of this anymore. You're a Trump enabler. You're on your way out. And that's, uh, that is tattooed on your forehead. Yep. Well, should we get to the news then? Sure. Let's get, quickly get to the news. Yeah. Rudy and Stormy and Mikey, oh my. Rudy and Stormy and Mikey, oh my. <laughs> uh, yeah. Today, Rudy Giuliani, or yesterday, Rudy Giuliani went on TV uh, to to poop out of his mouth, which was kind of amazing. <laughs> Uh, and admit that Donald Trump reimbursed Michael Cohen for the 130k uh, in hush money that he funneled uh, to Stormy Daniels, which is kind of amazing. Well, the the parallel story is apparently no one in the White House knew this was coming. He didn't clear with anybody. He didn't talk to anybody. There was no messaging ready for this story to break. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just something he said on the TV. Yeah, yeah. because because well, he's an old guy who's a in a safe space on Fox, right. talking can to there. Hannity, so he can just shoot the shit. And he just can shoot the shit. And that's what he did. He just shot the shit. And Hannity kept trying to pull him out of it and say, you know, Michael or yeah. President Trump says he didn't know about this. Really? He does? Well, you know, Michael Cohn's a great guy and nobody's more upset about this whole thing he's going through than Donald Trump. Well, you know, that's something that Trump might have wanted to get out. Uh-huh. A, a postcard to Michael Cohen. But, you know, since Cohen's house was raided, Trump has. has called Michael Cohen yes. on the Michael phone. Michael Cohen and his 16 burner phone. Yes, he has. And it was Giuliani who told him, don't do that anymore. <laughs> You're, you can't call him anymore. We have to assume his phones so, are bugged because his house so has been raided. I'll, do. I'll go on Fox and I'll say something really clever and you'll love it. Oh, yeah, and we'll we'll make it we'll make it better. Yeah. We'll make it better for Michael. Giuliani was never very sharp anyway. Uh but now and and there was one correspondent on the 11th hour last night who really danced around the issues of what happens when you're over 70 and you're not mentally 100%. And he, she wasn't talking about Trump at this particular moment. She was talking about Rudy. <laughs> uh this is not in our notes, but I just want to add it for context. Yesterday Rick Santorum being fed his own dick on CNN <laughs> was not, was not, was not the biggest story of a Republican shitting the bed on television. Yeah. Well, on television. that's because Chris Cuomo said to, to 
for some reason, to fill the 24-hour news cycle, it was necessary to have Rick Santorum Contractual on obligation. Right. CNN's right. New Day to talk about things. And so uh, Chris Cuomo said, you know, what are we going to do about this WAPO report that shows that Donald Trump lies nine times a day? And the first words out of, uh, you know, I want to call him Frothy Mix, Driftglass. Yeah, I, we all um, do. We all do. Rick, Sa- Rick Santorum. Yeah. The first words out of his mouth were, well, you know, Obama lied about you can keep your health yeah, plan. Obama lied. And, and and so what happened? And again, this is where rewarding people who do the right thing and punishing them when they do the wrong thing, you can modify behavior. Really because can. Chris Cuomo said, come on, man, we've got we've got to be better than this. Right. And I loved those words coming out of Chris Cuomo. Said, we've got to be better than this. We cannot do this both sider nonsense. Now he's been trained by Twitter and people calling out the media saying you cannot make this an either or Barack Obama did it to equality between Trump and anybody else. There is both sides don't do this. And, then, and he did Faith. one more thing that I think was super special. Uh was play on Rick Santorum's fake Christianity. He did. He said, His you're a, you've, faith. for years and years, you've had a, been a man of faith. You've stood up to Donald Trump. You've, during the debates, you stood up to him mm-hmm. and you've said, and, and then like you said, yeah. uh, Rick Santorum had to choke on his own words and say, well, I wish he wouldn't use so many falsehoods. I don't like to call anybody a liar. Rick Santorum, super Christian, is sitting here playing this false moral equivalence game. Right, really? Right, right, I thought you right. were a Christian there, Rick. Yeah. And yeah. I, in that moment, at under those circumstances, that is a absolute that's an absolutely legitimate arrow to pull out of your quiver. It is. It if, is. if that person has been spending their entire career humping the Bible, telling you how pious they are, and that's their qualification for being in public office or on television, then you go right after them on that. And, and but that was not even the mm-hmm. that was not even the most embarrassing, most thing. embarrassing yeah. horrible thing that happened in the with the Republican Party this week. Yeah. And the thing that made me more mad than anything Trump has done that made me angry to tears was this week Tom Price said that the GOP's decision to repeal the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate is going to increase the cost of health insurance for everybody. Yeah, my wife means literally to tears. Literally, we we looked at our daughters that night and you pointed out to them, I want you guys to notice, Donald Trump and Republicans made your mother cry. Look at her. Yeah. He's crying because yeah. of them. Because the girls were really concerned. And, and it's like. Yeah, they were worried I was losing well, it. And in, in the, their universe of, of, you know, the, the constellation, you are the sun. Um, <laughs> and, and when something is wrong with the sun. The right. whole, when mom cries, the whole, solar the whole system is, in real is not right. It's, like, it's not yeah. you girls. Yeah. It's nothing to do with you. She's not mad. She's not upset. It's <laughs> it. She can't stand the fact that these fuckers did it. They did it. on. I didn't use that word. Did it? Did it on purpose? And they knew they were doing it. Oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna screw a lot of people. It's gonna drive up the cost. They of said so. Yeah. Of course they do it. Of course they do it. And they lied about it. And they lied about it. And our congressman, the the soon to be former congressman, Congressman Rodney, uh, man in hiding, <laughs> Davis, who will not hold a town hall meeting, who will not answer, do anything yeah. that interacts with the public in any meeting. Because he way. knows I will be there. That's why. Um, <laughs> Is one of the guys who was whipping votes to take health care away yep. from my kids. Yep. yep. And I will never forgive that ever. And I will never forgive people who voted for this fucker and who, who stand by it. If you're just too stupid to know any better and then you woke up one day and realized that you made a dumbass mistake, that's fine. But the people who stand with these assholes and stand with them and stand with them and then when, when the shit finally falls apart, declare their independence and then come right back and stand with the, the next generation of assholes without, without pausing are dead to me. Uh, those people are absolutely my enemies, and those people are the people who have to be brought to heel. And their their creatures in Congress mm-hmm. need to go. Well, I think I think what we're saying is that in the best of all possible worlds, they will be embarrassed to the point that they never raise their hand again about politics. Yes, we hope so. We certainly. I have noticed. We hope so. A precipitous drop off in political email from the usual suspects. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk yeah. about it at all. They want to talk about. Let's talk about country music, country music, and cars and chicks. Can't we all get along? Jokes, yeah, funny little yeah, jokes I right. heard, and the jokes yeah. are funny, and the cars are cool. And what about the? Uh, weren't you obsessed with Barack Obama? Like every thirty minutes, I would get an email from somebody about. 
this scandal and that scandal and, and, and using the Navy to take him on vacation to cost a quarter billion dollars. And you guys were like, you guys were like neurosurgeons. You, you at the molecular level, you were obsessed with politics. Oh, look, and now Barack you've won. Obama was golfing again. Yeah. And now you've won. <laughs> now you won. And you're guys in the White House. Why are you suddenly not interested at all in anything to do with politics? Oh, well, it must have something to do with the fact that I guess classic cars and little jokes and country music are much more interesting than the guy you vote for is turning into. It turned out to be the, exactly the person I told you he would be. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about something else. Yeah. Um, like the Iran nuclear deal, which we're going to get. That's over. That's over. Donald mm -hmm. Trump's decided to withdraw yeah. from it because he believes mm -hmm. everything he heard, heard on Fox News or, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, Info Wars or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Robert Mueller warned Trump's legal team that they could do this the nice way or the not nice way. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out yeah. that Trump's current legal team does not have the security clearance Yay. <laughs> required to discuss sensitive issues. Yeah. During any interview with Mueller, Trump's former attorney, John Dowd, was the only person on Trump's legal team with the proper clearance, and he quit a month ago. So they're and they're they're just behind, you know, they're behind on all these things. Uh, and his uh, Donald Trump's unhinged outbursts are getting more and more frequent, and more and more insane. Uh, this week, he threatened to quote, get involved, get involved in the rigged system over the Justice Department's ongoing dispute with the House Freedom Caucus. Specifically, um, the Justice Department has a longstanding protocol of not turning over um, material in an active investigation to the Senate, to the House, to anybody. They don't hand sh that shit over while they're in the middle of an investigation, especially, and that's just standard operating procedure, especially knowing that the people who are running the House investigation are stooges of Donald Trump. And will the minute they hand anything over that's interesting or relevant or important, these fuckers will scamper right over to the White House, kiss his puffy white ass, and hand over everything they know to him because they want him protected at all costs. They are absolutely corrupt. They're absolutely enabling him every step of the way. Everybody knows it. And everyone knows that if you hand your notes to the, the, the Freedom Caucus, next stop 30 minutes later is going to be Fox News and Donald Trump. And everyone knows it. So uh, the Freedom Caucus uh, is, is like preparing impeachment. Yeah. For Rod Rosenstein. <laughs> which will never go anywhere. But they're desperate to find out what the fuck the, the uh, Justice Department's doing. And the Justice Department is saying, nope. Nope, go pound sand. We're busy. We're busy bringing you all down. So go away, little boys. So Trump's bodyguard and a Trump lawyer raided Dr. Hobo Von Feelgood's office. Yes. Took the original and only copy of Trump's medical chart from February 2017. Harold Bornstein also admitted that Trump dictated the whole letter regarding him being the most healthy president ever in history. Uh, that was just made up as I went along. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. I just made it up. Now. Again, we play this game. Everyone plays this game. But imagine what would have happened if Hillary Clinton had said that, if Barack Obama had said, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. uh, Hillary Clinton, who obviously had fatal pneumonia that was going to kill her, <laughs> which was reported in banner headlines in the New York Times. Everyone was speculating, oh, my God, oh, my God, maybe she's going to die really soon. Um, imagine what would have happened if after she was elected, uh, her doctor went out. She, she said, yeah, we just made this shit up. Yeah, you know, we made up a bunch of stuff about her health. She's really got... Uh, uh, you know, an alien living inside her that's going to burst out of her chest cavity any minute now. But you didn't need to know that because fuck you. You don't need to know that. Um, anything, anything, any rounding error on any given day that that happens to the Trump criminal enterprise, any any point oh 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 one percent scandal would have been enough to end yep. the Clinton presidency or the Obama presidency. Absolutely. And everybody knows it. Uh, Ukraine stopped cooperating with Mueller regarding Paul Manafort at the same time. The Trump administration was finalizing plans to sell the country anti-tank missiles. Yeah. Uh, Planned Parenthood and two other pre-productive rights groups are suing the Trump administration to block a radical shift in the federal federal Title X program, uh, which would emphasize things like the rhythm method. And by the way, today is National Day of Prayer Day uh -huh. for the two Corinthians. I eat a little cracker and a little bit of my juice and that forgives my sins day. Uh -huh. Uh and uh, it, there's a very funny picture up at Crooks and Liars that was on Twitter of uh, there's Mike Pence, you know, bowing over his hands with his eyes squeezed tight, really, really tight. 
and Donald Trump is kind of giving God the side eye. Yeah. But uh, in addition to the Planned Parenthood lawsuit, I thought it was hilarious. Found out about three hours ago, the ethics groups that have been suing Donald Trump on the emolument stuff. Right. Crew, they're called. Um, they, they filed a supplemental criminal and ethics complaint against President Trump this morning over the Stormy Daniels payment, thanks to new information that Rudy Giuliani <laughs> provided last night on the Sean Hannity thanks, show. Thanks, Rudy. Thank you so very much. You're very ha- you're a helper, Rudy. <laughs> thanks for being a helper. Well, help support. It's like shaking bacon. He helped. Yeah. Well, you know, and Michael Avenatti wants uh, all of Trump's surrogates and Donald Trump to be on Fox News every day. Yeah, all the time. Every, like, they should live in the Big Brother house and just and cameras just on them. have cameras all day on long. talking all day long. You know, they, and now, we're, now we find out they kind of do. And they're <laughs> kind of cool with that which i don't know how they're going to feel about that once it all falls apart but good for that you want you want me to rip through the the pruitt news yeah go ahead uh, a whistleblower at the epa epa said that pruitt was a bold-faced liar when he testified that he never retaliated against anybody uh, any subordinates he uh his hundred thousand dollar trip plus uh to morocco was arranged by a lobbyist who won a forty thousand dollar a month contract from the moroccan government isn't that exciting uh and thank goodness for state governments California and 17 other states are filing lawsuits against the Trump administration yes. to protect the national vehicle emission standards being rolled back by the EPA. And we will, we will have a Democratic uh, attorney general in Illinois. Yes, we will. All of the candidates for attorney general have promised to sue the Trump to join all these lawsuits against the Trump administration. So that's going to happen. We'll be there. And speaking of president and waiting, Mike Pence. <laughs> He's got the word Trump tattooed across his forehead. You know, he's permanently labeled forever. Uh, in, in one day before the National Prayer Breakfast, when he when he asked God to forgive him for being Mike Pence, uh, <laughs> he called Joe Arpaio, you know, torturing Joe, the yeah. criminal, the uh-huh. felon, the, uh-huh. the, the first person that President Stupid pardoned. I uh, called him a champion of the rule of law. I was glad to see him. Damn glad to see him because, let's face it, uh, Arpaio people, our Pence people are – Handmaid's Tale people. They're all the yeah. same. They're all yep. the same uh, king rat. This is the week that Trump tweeted that it was so disgraceful that the questions concerning the Russian witch hunt were leaked to the media. But, of course, they were all leaked out of Trump's White House Yeah, and his legal team specifically. OK. Yes. The campaign has spent $228,000 to pay part of Michael Cohen's legal fees. Uh, as long as all of the bookkeeping is very careful and everything that they are spending is related to the campaign. Uh, that is OK. But uh, something tells me that uh, there's going to be a lot of accountants from the prosecutor's office looking very carefully at all that money yeah. and about and phone calls about uh, any promises of money to make it right or make it good, et cetera. Mexico is going to pay for the wall. Uh, Trump tried very hard to blackmail Montana Senator John Tester with I know stuff about John Tester and. No one in the media believed him and no one in the Congress believed him. And that story just kind of blew right over. But uh, calling out a U.S. senator and saying, I know secrets about him because you don't like that John Tester was doing his job about Dr. Johnny Feelgood. You know, this is what the new normal is. And we're not going to normalize that. So Uh, Donald Trump threatened to shut down the federal government in September if he doesn't get a stupid wall. So got that to look forward to. John Kelly referred to Donald Trump as an idiot, according to uh, <laughs> many highly placed sources. And I don't doubt that for one little minute. I'm going to skip ahead to Kanye, if you don't mind, and say, I, I, uh, it's important. Uh, I think you should all listen very closely, get in close where you can hear my voice. I don't care. I couldn't care. I don't care what Kanye West thinks. Don't care. Yep. Don't Fun. care what Kanye thinks about anything. He's ignorant, ignorant, racist, approval seeking mentally ill person thinks about yeah there, there's a whole there was a whole thumb wrestling contest on on uh, some of the radio stations about genius versus craftsman versus what versus this like hey, come on man mm-hmm. you know i could i could run down the personal and political peccadillos and horrifying uh behaviors of some of my favorite authors uh the two don't have anything to do with each other and so i don't give a shit about kanye west never did never will Apparently, his music is quite popular with the kids, and that's just great. (laughs) He's mentally problem. He has mental problems. That's and I feel sorry for people that have mental problems. Okay. Uh, Yeah. Is there was a we talked about this last week? Actually, this was breaking news last week. The red state purge. I wonder how that's going. Yeah, going great. 
Blue gal. It's always going great. It's always sunny. And <laughs> it's always sunny. Just going it's great. just always good. <sighs> what we do each, week? each week, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by user listeners. This week's internet kitties, plural, are Fiona and Lenny. They are brother and sister. Fiona is the queen of the house. Uh-huh. And Lenny, her brother, has some vision issues. He can't see real well. Uh, but he is helped by scent and whiskers and his seeing eye sister, which is very nice to hear. They are best friends and share a, a, a big cushion in this week's Internet Kitty picture. Go visit Fiona and Lenny at our Facebook page and website. And thank you. You can send your Internet Kitty one or two or more or whatever uh, to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. If you have more than two kitties, and we do at our house, uh, go ahead and send individual pictures of each kitty because we'll use them over the course of several weeks. We don't have a problem with that. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's hard if to get were... kitties to sit together in the same picture. Let me tell you. If only there were an expression that covered that concept. <laughs> cats in a bag. <laughs> Herding cats. Herding cats, yes. Sometimes that's hard to do. And our old lady kitty doesn't want to be uh, no. crowded with any boy kitties. Just go no. away. Right. She's ready for her close-up whenever she's ready for her close-up. and then When she's ready for her, and she doesn't want any other kitties around her. No, no. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email, just prolabpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions. Yeah. Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. No. I did want to thank no. the woman who sent us two coffee mugs uh, this week. We don't need any more coffee mugs, but these were very clever. Uh, the Ithaca t- Tumbrel and Guillotine Outlet Store was was it? I don't have the mug in front of me. I don't have it in front of me, but it's it's uh... and it's we make all your one percenters twelve percent less. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something to that effect. It, they're very clever. And uh, we they're big, and we like – I can drink a lot of coffee in one of those. So thank you for, for those mugs. Uh, we'll make room for them somehow. <laughs> and and they, will hold, they will hold other fluids than coffee. Mm-hmm. They will hold other they beverages will. than coffee. We're going to test that out. Yeah, yeah. Beer stein or whatever, sure. It is my theory that I'm going to test out. Uh-huh. Where am I? Oh, so I, it's don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. Speaking of coffee, that's what it is. Don't mm-hmm. forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. I love you. You love me. I love you, too. I do. I love you like crazy. <laughs> he <laughs> loves me, folks. <laughs> Even when I get totally over-emotionalized and stuff. And stuff. Yeah. I, he says I always cry about the right things. You do. Thank you. You do. Thank you. You, you really do put up with me. I appreciate that. Uh, approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal information and our uh, Patreon and our GoFundMe information is all there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter or other social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Hey, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties kind of want to get in on this be a Trump lawyer for a day scam. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.